uh, the, the only thing that can re-enter, the only thing that has the capability of re-entering is just the command just, module. Just the command module. So they have to be able to jettison the service, uh, uh, the service module, and of course they'll be jettisoning this portion, the landing uh, modules, as uh, they have established that they're on the way safely home and have enough consumables. Now, uh, Wally, are consumables any problem? Oxygen and water. Uh, uh, they get some of their water supply as a byproduct of the fuel cells, I know. Right. But they also have pretty good uh, supply on board tanks that uh, well, are already well, filled, aren't they? The, the, by now, the uh, water byproducts of the fuel cells should have filled up the, what we call the potable water tanks. So that, that supply is uh, readily available. And it's, it's a, a pneumatic source, so it, it just basically squeezes out from an air pressure system. It's actually oxygen uh, through a water gun, so they can drink that. Now, in the limb, there is water also stored there for the crew. What so about? I, I'm not worried about water. I'm not worried about food. What about the oxygen, oxygen itself? Will uh, should flow uh, flow through uh, from the limb or from the command module because it's gaseous and should come through. Now, there may be some electrical circuits that must be activated and can be even by the command module to bring this through, but. To circulate the oxygen, we have some pumps, we call them compressors, but they're much like little fans that really circulate the gas through the vehicle so that you don't have uh, layers of uh, impure gas and then layers of good oxygen. So this, this shouldn't be too much of a problem. The load that's required for that is very low. So, uh, so the electrical load, of course, is what I'm referring to. So really the, uh, the problem that uh, faces the men in Mission Control in Houston and Jim Lovell and Jack Swigert Fred Hayes aboard uh, Apollo 13 is uh, simply the one of, uh, of getting the LEM descent stage firing off at the proper moment, proper time, and with the proper thrust. Uh, presumably that's available from the battery supply they have. Uh, the concern at the moment then is, is limited to that uh, and the, of course, uh, the feeling that we've uh, uh, aren't going to make a moon landing this time. Uh, that, I would say we can just forget the moon landing for now and uh, concentrate on using the LEM descent stage, as you aptly described it, as the propulsion system. Now, the attitude that they will acquire can be acquired either by the reaction jets. Notice these small little thrusters you see here. These are very similar to the ones you see on the service module. So they can use those to establish the attitude of the whole stack, as we might call it, or the she yeah. uh, to to get it to get it oriented in the proper. They're having picture. a little problem right now. We've just been advised from uh, Mission Control in Houston. Uh, they're rolling around their fore and aft axis, up and down axis, and uh, Lovell says he's uh, this slight roll. He's trying now to stop. Uh, what would that indicate? Uh, he's probably got to learn how to use these. Uh, with what I would call a combined stack. Uh, our training normally involves flying the limb with the two stages as one in uh, one system, not controlling this whole stack from the limb attitude control system. If you see what I'm trying to say, no, I, I, I do. These to now, control it. So these are off center from the uh, center of mass. But now, Wally, learning to use a new system like this in the past has meant an expenditure of quite a lot of fuel. Well, uh, I, I heard that one report from Mission Control, they've got 20 hours, so I think he'll sneak up on this one. Yeah. He's not going to rush into it. Now, 20 hours before the firing. This is why we still have test pods flying these things, and I'm quite pleased to realize we have three of them up there. It's interesting that Jack Swigert, when he was uh, suddenly called off the bench of the backup crew uh, to replace Ken Mattingly for this flight, uh, you made the comment uh, down in... Uh, Florida Saturday that uh, and several of the other astronauts and others we heard from uh, said it uh, that in one way uh, he was the best man possible as a substitute since he wrote the book about uh, the command module and its possible malfunction so if anybody knows what might be wrong in there he, he does I I, I'd say Jack is the, the best man to have aboard right now and I'm sure that none, none of us would envy that slot but in any case I, I would say that if there's a solution to this problem, he's, he's going to help unearth it. Now, the timeline of, uh, of events, as I understand it, and we're waiting for that news conference in Houston, I suppose it's about to start uh, any minute now, and we'll cut in when it does. Uh, the, uh, uh, the timeline is that they will fire this descent stage engine 
20 hours from now, mm -hmm. roughly, uh, which would uh, put it uh, at about, uh, what, uh, 9 o'clock tomorrow night. Uh, I think that that is the time that I had heard earlier, 9.23 or something like that, uh, Eastern time tomorrow night. Uh, at that time, they will be uh, on the far side of the moon, uh, just just making the first kind of turn around the moon as the moon has caught them and is swinging them within its own gravity. Uh, they will uh, they will come on around the moon and fire this engine at that time to boost them out of moon orbit at precisely the right moment to put them back on a trajectory toward the toward the Earth. So the critical time for them now, uh, as far as the maneuver goes, is uh, at nine something uh, tomorrow night, Eastern time. If uh, all goes well then, uh, Odyssey, the command module, will be splashing down in the Pacific, according to the present calculations, at 12.13 uh, p.m. Eastern time, uh, Friday. Uh, it was intended, of course, that it land on the moon, the lunar module, on Wednesday night. The walk on the moon was scheduled for Thursday. Uh, and uh, uh, the uh, entire spacecraft, after another day of orbiting the moon, was scheduled to return on uh, the following Tuesday. But uh, now all of that schedule has been changed, and uh, we have a, something of a crisis in space. I gather, Wally, that you are reasonably confident that all of this can go now, as uh, Houston has figured it out, and the fellows up there in Odyssey. Walter, one of the things that comes to my mind, because people always ask us about it, is uh, uh, do you have fear? And that's a great luxury. You can't have fear in this environment. If you do, uh, the next thing you approach is the luxury of panic. And these men are trained to fly in the uh, most extreme circumstances. And in the past, almost all of our missions have been, in, uh, in contrast, a piece of cake. Because we've always trained for the worst case. Now, this is one of those bad cases. I wouldn't say it's the worst case. So, Wally, that's it. Excuse me, but we're going to Houston now. The uh, news conference is just beginning. Christopher Rep Center is speaking. I should uh, start out by saying that uh, we have a serious problem uh, in the command and service module. We appear to have had some kind of uh, accident with the, uh, in the region of the fuel cells and the oxygen tanks. We have not tried too much to reconstruct the, uh, what has happened because we're more concerned at the moment for getting the situation under control. Uh, as you have seen, we've uh, begun to use the uh, limb as a device for keeping oxygen in both the command and service command module and the lunar module, and we're using the power system from the lunar module. Uh, the it appears at the present time that everything is under control and that uh, we have a safe situation at the moment. Uh, I think uh, Colonel McDivitt may want to give you some more details on the systems and uh, Mr. Schoberg could certainly talk about the operations plans that are going on at the present time in the control center. Uh, right, Chris. The way we have the spacecraft configured right now is uh, with the CSM powered down completely. Uh, before we powered it down, we were able to isolate the surge tank and the emergency repress tanks in the, CS, in the command module. Uh, these provide oxygen for reentry, so we have a, a command module that has oxygen for reentry, it has the reentry batteries, and has pyro batteries and all the systems uh, that are in the command module. Our uh, Malfunction uh, apparently occurred in the bay, which which includes the hydrogen tanks, the oxygen tanks, and the fuel cells, and uh, was in no way connected with anything with the command module. We should be able to provide power, electrical power, from the LEM for the uh, return voyage to Earth. Uh, we should re be able to return on the oxygen within the LEM, and we will be using the lithium hydroxide out of both the command module and the uh, lunar module. We can still power the command module from the lunar module at uh, low power levels through the wiring which is normally used to power the limb from the command module. So we expect that we'll be using a dual spacecraft mode from now until the time that we uh, get back to Earth. Uh, we will have to, we'll be firing the limb engine uh, at some time later to accelerate our return voyage and I think SIG probably comment on that best. 
Uh, yeah, the uh, minimum return to Earth time, this would be a total flight duration, would be about 133 hours. That would result in a landing in the Atlantic. That's one option we have. A second option would be to go to the uh, Mid Pacific line. That would take about uh, 142 hours uh, total flight duration. The burns to get you back would be made at about between 77 hours and 79 hours of, of uh, flight from liftoff. Uh, we'd anticipate that the eastern propulsion system would be used for the maneuvers, and it has the capability of either the ones I described.